Okay, I'm just going to um, talk um, for a few minutes about uh, my comics and how I came to start making them, and um, also to kind of um, work with this this question: How can we give a voice? the archaeological record, because I tend to write a lot of my comics in the first person, sort of inhabiting the, uh, the archaeological um, <laughs> artefacts, um, and um, also I'm trying to draw that into my artwork as well. So I'm just going to go through some examples and um, talk to you about my comics. This is the very first comic that I drew. I've been um, writing comics for a little while, I've been collaborating with John here on... Um, uh, a comic for a while and another with another friend of mine so I've been writing a lot and I've been writing scripts for comics and um, I've been giving my son some advice my son makes comics and I was going but he was you know he never got really great um, marks in art because art's all sort of lovely representational does it look perfectly like a person and he felt underconfident I said like comics is about style you've got to get a style and sort of develop your own your own uh, sort of approach to things and I realised that I wasn't drawing comics because I was worried about my art and I thought I'd better take my own advice so I started making comics um, this uh, is about folk and drums which are Neolithic um, uh, um, Neolithic chalk blocks um, you can go and visit them in the British Museum it's very worth doing um, a lot of my comics come out of conversations with archaeologists and in collaboration with people so I was talking to Andy Jones about his Making a Mark uh, project and um, about um, the active nature of these, of these artefacts and this is where the story came from you can see a bit of Alfred Jell getting in here with the dazzling decoration. Um, this is not me, this is Tom Gold. So some of my influences um, in reading comics uh, in newspapers and, and comic books. Um, <laughs> Tom Gold's one of my favourite cartoonists and he does this thing that I like to do which is to inhabit different beings. There's some lovely ones of his with figurines, talking, slices of bread, whatever you like. Um, so um, I think this thing of, of giving a sometimes a non-human voice on things can be interesting. This is Adam Murphy, who um, writes the children's comic, The Phoenix, and um, he does something called Corpse Talk, in which every week he interviews a dead famous person, um, and they, they are corpse-like, a little bit zombified. And um, he's got a lovely way of pulling out history um, through conversation, through commentary, and, and his lovely artwork. They're really worth checking out. And um, another big influence on me um, Linda Barry's book, What It Is, and now her syllabus book that's come out. If you're interested in writing or drawing and you haven't done any for ages and you really want to get into it, really look at her work, look at her Tumblr, The Nearsighted Monkey, um, online, and she's just brilliant. Her writing exercises, her drawing exercises, she's, she's very inspiring. And also this education book, The Reader and the Writer, um, which was to get children to engage with high quality text but the way they were doing it was writing in the first person so taking stories and then inhabiting it um, from this point of view and I've been trying out some of these exercises and it fed into what I was doing um, with my comics so I've made two volumes of archaeological oddities um, there may be some more in the way I've got a few, a few planned <laughs> I haven't done them for a while um, so again they, they tend to be narrated from the point of view of the of the artefacts, um, these are uh, Iberian schist plaques. There's a pippy stone um, from Alta up there, and uh, and uh, the desperate carnix. So there's a whole load of these, and they're online. You can you can read them if you want to. Um, the first longish comic that I did was um, this, the Bell in the Deep, which takes um, a piece of folklore um, about the bells that were stolen from uh, Bosom Church, allegedly, and, uh, and uh, rang. They, they, were, they were stolen by Vikings and sank into the mud and continued to ring. Um, the great bell rang with its fellow bells um, when, the, when the church chimed. And again, I'd done this as a piece of prose originally, written in the first person, and, um, and turned it into a comic. Um, this is from my comic about Wayland the Smith, and this was done in collaboration with Howard Williams um, from Chester. And um, this was a really good 
experience to, to work with someone who knew some material really well that I hadn't studied since I was an undergraduate and had forgotten a lot of things about. So um, it, was, it was good to collaborate. I wrote a script. Howard read it and said, no, the Anglo-Saxons were much more bloodthirsty than that. And <laughs> I rewrote the uh, script. But um, the thing that um, uh, was important to me about making this comic was the material culture. So uh, we were working with a Frank's casket as our main um, visual element. And the idea was to take aspect the, the whole visual design of the casket and try and put that into the comic itself. Um, so um, the idea is, is that the, the, the artifact is given its own visual voice or presence. So although this comic is narrated by Wayland, by a human and not by the objects, um, the object's got its presence right through in the art. It's a little bit fuzzy, that top one, but this is Wayland um, getting, he, he's taking the geese, throttling the geese and taking their feathers so that he can be, build his his wings to escape from the island prison that he's on and this is how it was translated into the comic and that was a lot of fun to work on. Um, uh, this is the next thing I worked on which was Tales from the Rock Face and um, this is based on um, uh, rock art from Mesolithic rock art from Vingen. Um, and um, you can see over here, um, I, won't, I don't think I've got time to show you now, I did a really short animation um, which is up online of this of this deer, and I got a little fixated by this this particular picture because there were some deer, uh, and they're all supposed to be deer at Bingen, but some of these deer are really funny looking. So um, <laughs> my um, my story um, is is sort of taken from the point of view of the deer coming alive on the rock face, and uh, trying to understand the world from their point of view and their own understanding of why they're there and how they've, they've come into being. Um, so this is very simple using that rock art style. Okay, and this is the comic that I have outside um, in the exhibition. Um, and I'm just going to take you through briefly the process of making this comic. Um, it's based on Mesolithic rock art, again this time from Alta um, in Norway, in the far north of Norway and is based on the work of, of Knut Helskog, who's done masses and masses of really detailed research um, into the rock art at Alta. Um, Knut's work has shown that um, there are narrative elements to the, the rock art at Alta, and seasonal elements as well. So, for example, here I've got the, the bear going into hibernation, and you've got aspects on the rock where you've got this fat bear um, and it's going into its den and then it comes out skinny later so you've got it going in, in nice and plump in the autumn and then coming out skinny um, in, in the spring you've got other pieces of the rock art that's got narrative in there so this is my attempt to, to tell that story um, so this is, this is uh, Knud Helsbrook's work and these are some of the actual images that I drew on in making the comic so um, this is an earlier comic that I made for the Human Seasons um, uh, blog, which I've been contributing to. And this is just sort of showing how I sort of try and get the feel for the art just by sketching and, and doodling things and getting a sense of, of how the art works. Um, and normally I write a script first and then try and work out how it's going to work in the panels. But in this case, this is my first draft of this. Um, I was trying to juggle the images, the shapes, and the, um, the words at the same time. And my real concern with this comic was to try and get the comic to look like the rock art, so to keep that, that sort of uh, similarity between the way um, the art comes out on the rock and the way it comes in my comic. This is me just working out the shapes, so I can try and get a composition that looks nice on the page. This is my um, final draft which I used for um, drawing my final uh, comic. And then here it is again. So this is drawn um, in layers on Photoshop on a, on a tablet, Wacom tablet, um, to finish up. So again, for me, the, the, uh, the important thing is, uh, is, the, is the similarity and mimicry between the, um, the, uh, the rock art and the images in the comic. 
And I think just also that importance for me of narrating um, from the first person, looking at micro landscape in this case from the inside to give a different perspective from having always the human um, perspective looking at things. But mostly, I think I really like doing it because I like imagining what it's like to be a deer or a bear or even a lump of decorated chalk. So, okay, that's me. Thank you very much.